just going to be a short video on um, basically showing you how to set up your egg tumblers to hold your African cichlid eggs until they turn into fry. Um, and we'll also do a little thing at the end on how to strip the females and put the eggs in the tumbler so you can see the finished product. Um, to run these four tumblers, right now I don't have them connected so all you see is the airline except for the last tumbler. I'm using a Tetra Whisper air pump. Um, it's enough to do 100 gallon. Um, but it seems to work these four tumbler tumblers perfectly fine. So um, we're just going to show you basically how we set ours up and then we're going to go ahead and strip some females and show you how it ends up looking. Alright, so these are the main components for how I build my tumblers. I know a lot of people do them differently, but I'm just going to show you a pretty cheap and um, effective way of doing this, which I also think um, it's one of the easiest ways of doing it. Basically, you need a heater holder with a suction cup, um, this little clear tubing, which you can get at most pet stores. Uh, they usually sell it in like three foot segments. Um, then what I do is I take and drill little holes in the top of the tumbler to let the air pass through that. Next you need a water bottle cap. Any water bottle will work. Um, I mean they're pretty much universal. Also drill a hole right there in the top of it. And then this piece actually comes with um, any kind of like bubble filter or sponge filter you could get at a pet store. Basically, I take out the piece where it would normally connect, your airline con would connect right in there. But what I do is I take another piece of this clear tubing and I put a piece of pantyhose over it and then slide another small piece of clear tubing over it. I don't know if you can really see that there in the picture. Um, but what that does, it prevents other fish from coming up. I've actually had fish come up through the bottom like this and suck the eggs out of the tumbler through the pantyhose as the eggs are bouncing on this part. So. Recently, I have made this part so that the farthest the fish can get to is right here and it stops them and they can't actually get up into here and suck the eggs out. So, I've had it work pretty well for me. Um, really, the next step is putting this piece together. That pretty much just goes on right like that. Um, so, you have what looks like that. This is the part that prevents the fish from getting through and sucking up the eggs and then this part is where your actual eggs are going to be bouncing and your airline will hang right in here. Um, this water bottle cap seems to fit this pipe absolutely perfect. Um, it just snaps on like that. Then you take your airline and you put it through the top. This is going to be after you have your eggs in it. And then the last step is just putting your suction cup right like that. Then, once you stick it in, press it to the wall, and now you have airflow. And what that will do, it'll create a bouncing effect down here to keep the eggs tumbling. And what that does is prevents fungus and detritus from building up on the eggs. Um, it basically acts as the mom when she's rolling the eggs inside of her mouth. It's basically an artificial way of hatching out the eggs. So that's the basic idea of how an egg tumbler works and how we design them. Um, now we'll go ahead and show you how to strip a female African cichlid and putting the eggs inside the tumbler so you can see one at work. Okay, so here we have um, a female red top long guy. She's pretty small. Actually, I'm kind of surprised she's breeding at this age. She's probably only about an inch and a half to two inches long. Um, and she appears to have a mouthful of eggs. Now, this female has been holding for approximately three days. I usually let them hold a couple days. I don't strip them right away as soon as I see them breed, mainly because the courtship process and actually fertilizing the eggs can take up to two to three days. Um, I've continually seen them spawn. Uh, so I monitor this female and she looks like she's probably ready to go. So what I'm gonna, gonna, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and take her, I'm gonna put her in this clear specimen container um, where you can see I've already attached my egg tumbler here and I'm gonna strip her in this compartment. Then what I'll use is a airline tubing to suck it up and put the eggs inside of the tumbler itself. So, what you wanna do is you wanna real lightly grab the female out of the net. You can see her jaws extended here. Um, 
The main key in this whole process is to make sure that you're real gentle with the fish. If you stress it out too much, it can cause her to swallow the eggs or um, you can actually damage the eggs yourself by squeezing too hard. So really just being careful is the main, the main component here. What I usually do is I get them facing, if you're right handed, I usually like to put their head toward your uh, index finger so that it's pointing that way. It just seems to make it easier as you use your thumb to pry the mouth down. Then what you want to do is you kind of want to just grasp the gills and use your other index finger to just drop eggs. Oh, it looks like she's actually been holding for a little longer than I thought. This must be a different female. I don't know if you can see the eggs or the fry coming out. Now you want to be really careful when you're doing this because you can actually break her jaw by pulling down too hard. So you just want to be real easy with it. Um, sometimes if you squeeze their gills a little bit, it'll flush the fry right out of the mouth. Every once in a while they'll get loose. She might have a couple left in there, but we're not going to stress her out too bad. What I'm going to do is going to go ahead and let her go back inside the tank. Um, let's see if we can get another female that's holding actual eggs. Okay, so here we actually have another red top hong guy. Um, it appears that the other one I had had actually been holding longer than I thought. So this one will have eggs. Um, what I'm going to do is going to go ahead and strip her, just like I did the other one, except you should see little orange dots fall out. And those are the eggs. There's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two. Three. Looks like about 23 eggs came out of this pretty small female. I'm going to go ahead and release her. Um, she might have one or two left. But now I'm just going to show you how we basically go ahead and put the eggs inside of the tumbler. This is basically just airline tubing. You can get it at any pet store. Um, the place I get it at sells it by the foot. It's 29 cents per foot, so it's pretty cheap and affordable. Um, and this makes for a great way to suck up the eggs and add them into your egg tumbler. Um, it's kind of an art once you get to this stage. You have to make sure you don't push too hard down on the eggs. It's more of just basically trying to get them into this tube, stopping it, and then reversing them back into the tumbler. So we're going to go ahead and show you how that's done. All right, there we have all the eggs inside of the tumbler. Um, it appears that there was one little dud down here at the bottom. Um, it's pretty much just a deformed egg, so we're not gonna put that in there because what'll happen is it'll die and it'll fungus over the rest of the eggs. Um, so you can get a little bit of a top view here to see what the eggs look like from down inside. You can see all the little dots. Um, it appears there might be a few less than we had originally thought, but we're gonna go ahead and move those over to the tumbler and kind of give you an idea of how they should be bouncing to hatch them out. 
All right, so here we're releasing the eggs with the tumbler inside of their new fry tank. Um, this is what I call the hatchery tank. Basically, you pop the lid on, um, make sure that it's good and tight. Then, like I said in the beginning of this video, insert your airline tubing. I usually do it about a quarter to a half of the way down. You don't want to do it too far or else it'll make the eggs roll a little too quick. But basically, that then sticks to the glass. And you can see the eggs just barely bouncing. Um, you don't want them moving too much, but you do want them at a pace. Sometimes you have to adjust your air and get them to the point where they do that. Basically, you want them to kind of sit still and then bounce at uh, maybe three second intervals. And what that does is it pulls fresh water from the tank up through this tube and then kind of washes out the eggs and makes sure there's no uh, debris or anything that gets centered on the eggs. And it usually flushes it out the top of the tube. Um, those are definitely good, healthy, viable eggs because of their flesh color. Usually if the eggs go bad, they'll end up turning white. You want to remove those eggs because they will fungus over and kill the rest of the other eggs. Um, but there you go, that's pretty much how an egg tumbler works. And uh, these should hatch out in about 20 days.